Um, perfect. Okay. Let me just get my statement out so I can read that. So I can make this official. Okay, everyone. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.04. Uh, this meeting of the Economic Development and Employment uh, Committee of Brooklyn Committee Board 2 is called to order and being recorded for public access and archiving in accordance with the New York State Open Meeting Law. It is the practice of CB2 to conduct remote meetings with all committee members' cameras on. Public attendees are also encouraged to leave their cameras on, particularly if you're given the floor to speak. All attendees, please keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking. To maintain an appropriate discussion and voting process, I will make it known when, when and which topics are open for comment by committee members and board members at large and in the general public. If you have questions that fall outside of public comment time, please type your questions in the chat panel and we will address them as time permits. You may also email the district office at any time outside of these meetings. We are committed to providing access to all of our neighbors, regardless of physical ability or limitations. If you require accommodation or assistance for full participation, uh, please contact the district office 72 hours before any public meeting. We ask that those speaking or presenting use plain language, speak in a moderate tone, and frequently ask if you're speaking loud enough. If presenting, please read the title of every slide and describe any images on the slides, such as uh, photos, graphs, and charts. Okay, um, the committee secretary will now conduct a roll call. Good evening, everyone. Roll call starting with Chair Bill Flanoy, with Vice Chair Denise Peterson. Hey, Denise. With Ronald Cohen. Here. Hey, Ron. Lindsay Einhorn. I don't see Lindsay. Oleg Geyser. Here. Hey, Oleg. Here. Latrell Masso. I don't see Latrell yet. Ciro Scala. Here. Hey. Maisha Morales. Here. Hey, Maisha. Hi. And Kate Yearwood Young. I hear you either. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, may I get a motion to approve of the agenda, improvement of for the agenda? So moved. Mr. Cohen. Uh, oh, could you hold off a second? Could you add Celeste onto that list, please? Oh, by all means, yes. Celeste Staten. Oh, no problem. Happy to. Thank you. Thank Happy you. to. All right, Celeste. Oh. Thank you. Thank My you. apologies, Celeste. So. No problem. Uh, do I need a second for the motion to accept? Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Scala. Okay. Uh, did get, anyone get a chance to read the minutes from uh, January 2022? Yes, Ms. Peterson. I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, Mr. Flanoy, there are names that I'm seeing. Maybe I don't know, but I on this this panel here. Can we ask the other people to introduce themselves or are you going to do that after the approval of the minutes? Uh, yes, Ms. Pearson, I actually did suggest that they actually let us know who they are. Uh, the, not the public members, but the members who are representing organizations. Okay. okay. So I just wanted to go through the agenda first and then ask those people before we actually okay. get started. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, uh, did we get a chance to read the minutes from 20, January 2022? If there's any issues or questions or anything like that, just uh, report it to the board office and we'll make those corrections. Uh, once again, Ms. Gilman, always a good job. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay, so before we get going with the presentation for the Brooklyn Navy Yard, uh, those individuals who are representing other organizations, if you can give my secretary uh, your name and the organization you represent, I'd appreciate that. Hello, uh, Mr. Everyone. Warren. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Warren, uh, this is the time that you can actually tell us who you are, who you represent. Okay, so hello, my name is Warren Goodridge. I am actually the business mentor from the Brooklyn Cooperative Federal Credit Union. So um, I'm also a resident of CB2 as well. 
But um, I'm just on the call just to listen in and, and see what's going on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome to attend. Okay. Um, anyone else other than our presenter? Ms. Pauling? Um, hang on one second. Uh, I am looking for one. I, I cannot pronounce your name, unfortunately. So uh, could you just I'll let my uh, secretary know that you're here? Is it Sharuthi? Sh I can't. Oh, is it? it yeah, Sharuthi. Yes. Hi, I'm Sharuthi. I'm. Um, I live in downtown Brooklyn, and uh, I guess I'm part of the public. I don't represent any organization or anything. I'm just here to watch. And I believe also you you're interested. In, interested also in joining the board. Is that correct? Yes, I am interested in joining the community board. So uh, I've been uh, watching a few community um, board meetings just to get a feel of what it is and to learn a little bit more. Okay, that's why I needed you to give us your name so that we know. What yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, uh, we'll now begin our presentation. Um, the presentation is the Brooklyn Navy Yard Development Corporation. Uh, Rochelle Pauling is the Assistant Vice President of Hiring and Training at Workforce Development. Ms. Pauling, the floor is now yours. Perfect. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. So again, um, as mentioned, I'm Rachelle Polly, the AVP of Hiring Services and Adult Training at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And in this role, I get to have an opportunity to work and lead a team of professionals who are responsible of connecting hyperlocal residents in Brooklyn to jobs and careers here on the yard. So I put together um, this short presentation today to just go through some of the things that we are doing in our employment center specifically. So as it pertains um, to our employment center, we have been virtual for a really long time and because of COVID. And when we opened, like with many things, we had to close down again um, because of the outbreaks with the new variant. But we are excited to highlight to everyone here that we do have a reopening plan. And starting as early as next week, we are opening our centers up every Tuesday and Wednesday for residents to come back into our space and be able to get services um, at the employment center. And uh, to speak a little bit to those services, um, for those of you who may be new or not aware on this call, we do employment services, of course, where, like I mentioned, we connect local residents to um, opportunities here on the Brooklyn Navy Yard. We also do career support services, which looks like everything between resume upgrades to interview skills and different things in between with being able to support candidates with feeling great about going into these spaces and interviewing for jobs. Um, so as I mentioned, we're gonna reopen this week and then we're gonna tear up, we're gonna tear up where we're gonna keep our um, ears to the ground to make sure that there's no um, CDC guidelines about us closing and we're gonna gear up to open up the center 100% of the time to get back to normal. Um, for those candidates and community people who do not wanna come into the space, we are offering all of our programming and our services both virtually and on um, in person. And we're gonna to continue to do that even when we open up 100% because we wanted to create an access point for those um, people who may not be able to come into um, the center regularly. So that's um, speaking to our reopening plan here at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Um, also, I wanted to speak a little bit about some upcoming initiatives. So we have an adult training program that we've piloted last year. During that time, we had an opportunity to work with both incumbent workers and local residents of Brooklyn for CNC training, as well as junior and senior management training. And we're piloting, um, we're doing those trainings again this summer, starting summer 2022. Um, and we'll have many updates about when um, each training is actually going to roll out and to start, but that's an exciting opportunity for people in Brooklyn to take part, um, partake in these different trainings and work on the yard once they're done with these trainings and have those interview processes as well. 
Um, secondly, another initiative that we're doing here on the yard with the Employment Center is we're hosting um, some union panels. And what that really looks like is the Brooklyn Navy Yard is ramping up with doing a lot of construction projects. And with doing these construction projects as they come up, many of the jobs require union qualifications or certain certifications. And we wanna make sure that the local residents of Brooklyn has access to be able to take part in these opportunities. So what we've been doing is working with different unions throughout the city to get them to come in and start doing panels that's more informational to just let community members know how to join a union, what skills are necessary, and then of course when they have their trainings, how those participants and the candidates who are interested can join um, those potential trainings so that they can have the qualifications when we have those construction jobs, for example, on the yard. So that's something that's exciting that's happening this March. And again, we'll keep everyone abreast of the days that those are rolling out. Next, Brooklyn Navy Yard has an internship program that we do with college students and high school seniors, giving them an opportunity to work with our employers here on the yard. The application has just opened this week, so I will definitely share via email that information where we can get it out to as many um, residents as possible in the Brooklyn area so that they have young people in their households, high school seniors and college students for them to take advantage of this eight-week internship on the Brooklyn Navy Yard this summer. So I think that's exciting. And then last but definitely not least, um, previously I've been informed and I just started in November, but previous to me starting, there were conversations about initiating a resource and an employment fair. And I would love to speak to everyone here um, about getting that back on the calendar and doing um, an employment fair for the local community when it starts getting a little bit warmer outside so we can have it somewhere where we don't have to necessarily wear masks and really bring the community together on the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And then again, last but definitely not least, just thinking about ongoing engagement and how the Employment Center specifically is communicating with the local community of Brooklyn. We have several ways of getting out these messages and several ways of contacting um, local residents, but I would love to hear from the committee as well with some ideas or areas Areas that may have been brought to your attention that we can help support to get the word out. So thus far, I know that we are sending out newsletters via email and text messages to candidates who've come into our employment center and those highlight new job opportunities. We have the Brooklyn Navy Yard's website that's really energizing and has a lot of this date information where candidates can go online and not only apply for jobs, but schedule an appointment so that they can come into the employment center. And then we also do a lot of flyering as well. So I'm just interested to hear from you all about other ways that we can really engage the community so they can participate not only in our initiatives, but really come into the center as we're reopening so that we can connect them to opportunities here on your heart. So that is my presentation for this evening. And I would love to answer any questions if anyone has any. Thank you, Ms. Pauling. Um, I do have a question right now. It's my understanding that there's an initiative right now to actually have additional funding set aside for um, summer employment and summer, summer uh, uh, for individuals who are looking to actually find work within different organizations. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you aware of that? Are you mentioning, is that the SYEP program that you're referring to? I believe so. Is it the summer youth program? So I don't yes. have any information right now about the launch of the summer youth program, but it is definitely something that if we have access to, we can do on the yard. I just don't have that information right now, but I'm very familiar with the SYEP program. And if there's an opportunity for us to bring that to the local residents, we absolutely would. Yeah, because I believe it's an initiative that's just beginning right now. So they mm -hmm. haven't actually started it up yet, but I was making sure that you're aware of it because we have a lot of individuals within the district who are probably looking for work. 
Okay, so it'd be nice to have them uh, actually employed. Uh, also, can you give us an idea of uh, where you are as far as, uh, is there any turnover currently going on in the uh, Navy Yard? As far as- As far as, as our staff? Yes. Yes, so um, again, I started in November. I am replacing Regina who many of you may have been familiar with, who was amazing. Um, she has left the role from the Employment Center as well as Katie, who was the Senior Vice President um, of the Employment Center as well. And we are looking for Katie's replacement at this current time. Um, and I know that I started at the Brooklyn Navy Yard for the Employment Center in conjunction with Claire, who is my counterpart. She is the AVP for Career Pathways and would be leading the internship program as well. So those seats um, are no longer vacant and it's an exciting two new people starting. Okay, that's just kind of curious mm -hmm. about that. And yep. we're definitely interested in unions, okay? Uh, now, when you're saying basically that you're looking to actually have these individuals uh, certified for these jobs, if I'm correct, is that's what you're saying? Yes, so we're looking for the unions to come in and start with information and really talk about not only the requirements for the trainings and what certifications or qualifications that they, the candidates will leave with, but also talk about the career trajectory of being in a particular union or starting in a particular um, training. So they'll be coming in really giving a lot of information to the local candidates. And then when they have their enrollment dates set up for their actual training because they'll be doing the trainings, they will definitely consider those candidates. And then the, the goal is for that to be a straight pipeline back to the Brooklyn Navy Yard once they have those credentials. Okay, that's the biggest obstacle we see. A lot of individuals, mm -hmm. there's a lot of construction going on in the district. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they're union jobs and there's obviously a hurdle to overcome to actually get those jobs if you're not in the union. So one of our biggest issues was how to get you know, set up a gateway for these individuals to mm -hmm. actually be trained to actually get these union jobs. Yep. So. And, and that's one of the things we've definitely noticed that as well. And that's why we're trying to be proactive with getting people into these trainings because we, on a yard specifically, we don't have any construction um, endeavors that are happening, but when they do happen, they happen really rapidly. And then to your point, those um constituents would need to have a particular certification or credentials and to be in the union. So the conversation that we've had with these unions about coming and doing this panel is has been very transparent about creating a space for the candidates that, that are coming through um, this particular space in the employment center within the union and to support them through that. Thank you very much for doing that. We've been looking for mm -hmm someone to actually help us with this also. So you're a good partner to actually, hopefully, you know, have this go through, through uh, fruition. Mr. Scala, you have your hand up. Uh, Ms. Pauling, thank you for coming and I appreciate it. We have a real close relationship with uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yard for years. And the, the um, relationship has been closer and it's been a very good one for, for the community and uh, you've done a great job. I, I'm particularly interested in the fact that you, what, when you do outreach, do you specifically do outreach to the Farragut and the Engersoil houses? And also my second part would be if you do, do you have statistics on how many the Navy Yard employs from those from that area? Is that possible? I don't have that with me right now specifically, but yes, we do outreach to the NYCHA housing residents in Farragut, yes, and those um, housing complexes that you've mentioned. Um, we do it in a few different ways. We, like I mentioned, do it through flyering, and then when candidates come into our space, we keep in contact with them via email. Um, and then as they get employed or as they're connected to opportunities, we can definitely give you that data as it pertains to how many people. I just don't have that with me right now. My, my <laughs> one other question was the fact that mm -hmm. do you do you actually physically, or I, I guess not these days, but mm -hmm. I know that they have community centers there. Mm -hmm. Would the Navy Yard ever into, uh, plan to go there and specifically go there and discuss uh, job opportunities there directly since they're very close to you? 
Absolutely. If we have an opportunity and if anyone here with me being new and still meeting people in the ecosystem want to connect me with someone in that community center for me to be able to make that happen, absolutely. We can make that happen. And it's my understanding that it's been happening before um, as well. So yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Peterson, I saw your hand raised. Hey, thank you. Hi. I just want to go back to a part of your nice to meet you and congratulations and good luck and all of that, um, <laughs> Rochelle. So just going back, because it certainly sparked my attention mm -hmm. when you were talking about everything, but certainly about the union piece. And I'm not real clear on what that really is. So mm -hmm. is the union and how many unions or just a general union conversation? I, I'm trying to put the pieces together about what that looks like. And okay. so if you could kind of break that down for me a little bit, because I, I like the idea mm -hmm. of it, because it's always said that, you know, you're not in the union, you're not in the union, you can't, this is a union site, this is this and this is that. And yes, as Mr. Flannoy said, it's a, a big challenge trying to uh, kind of, sort of resolves that in some way that is beneficial to the community. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I would like for you to elaborate just a little bit on what that means, uh, union panel discussions and, and, and that. Perfect, yes. So what we've envisioned with um, this initiative, so far we've been speaking with the painters union, the carpenters union, and then a the union construction apprentice opportunity. Um, and those three union representatives um, has agreed to again, come into our space physically and host a afternoon, I don't wanna say workshop because it'll be a longer event, but really to come in and again, engage with the local um, residents of Brooklyn uh -huh. and give them a lot of information. And we're gonna have this happen um, quarterly starting in March. So what that'll really look like in practice is these unions will come in, they will talk and discuss their particular union. And each of these unions typically have a training program that they host themselves. So they'll also be giving residents information about those training programs. And then obviously giving our residents um, an opportunity to digest the information. That's the part that the employment center will support them with, with following up with them and seeing if any of them want to enroll in a particular um, training program with any of these unions. In a perfect world, when everything works perfectly, they take these trainings and then when they're done and they have those credentials and they're in the union, then they will be pipelined right back to us so that we can get them jobs here on the yard, especially when we start doing these big construction um, initiatives here on the yard and to get them okay. placed. Okay, so I'm sure other people may have a question. I, 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 I'm still a little not fully understanding it to the extent that mm -hmm. I do is enough for me to continue a conversation with you at a later time. Perfect. Thank you so much. Any other questions from committee members? Uh, Ms. Gilman. I just wanted to um, kind of second what Sarah had brought up. I think that Rochelle, first, thank you for, for such a thoughtful chat with us and presentation. We just to repeat what everyone's saying, we really love and appreciate the relationship we have with the yard um, and you guys are really thoughtful partners. So thank you. It seems like you do a great job at tracking people once they're on site with you and you've mm -hmm. got their information. I think the thing that we're all kind of thinking about is how are you, how can we help you reach people off site? So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you're open to going directly to NYSHA housing mm -hmm. nearby. Um, I think that that could be a really powerful fill in for folks who aren't being reached either digitally or just by the flyers. So however we can be a partner to you um, mm -hmm. and put you in touch with leadership there that can kind of have you guys on the ground in some regular way, I feel like it, it would do a ton of good to get people exposed uh, versus just the people who are crossing over and, and physically mm -hmm. coming to you already. I definitely uh, agree with that sentiment and it speaks to the, the level of engagement and trying to see, like you mentioned, where we can fill those gaps if people are not coming into the space. So yes, we are absolutely ready to do that. Awesome. 
Okay, any other questions from committee members or board members? Hi, this is Latrell. Um, yes, Latrell, please. Um, have you reached out to the um, Tennis Association president, Mary Andrews from Farragut? I know in the past they had a relationship, from my understanding, from her with the Navy uh, Job Placement Center before. Since you mm -hmm. since you since you started in not November, have you sat down with Miss Andrews and Farragut mm -hmm. yet? No, I haven't. Um, I also know that my counterpart, Jeffrey, um, who works for the Brooklyn Navy Yard and he takes care of a lot of the community um, relations, he may have sat down with Ms. Andrews and she may have gotten some content or flyers or communication from our particular department through Jeffrey. I just not didn't have a chance to meet with Ms. Andrews yet. Yeah, I but think that, sorry. Yeah. No, you finished, sorry. No, I was saying definitely if meeting and connecting with these key people, especially if you know that they will um, be great access points, I am really interested in getting that information from you guys. Also, there's an organization called the Farragut Stakeholders, and also there's a new director at the community center in Farragut, mm -hmm. too. So those are different pieces that, you know, different parts that you should look into because they, they had a a previous director so i think the new director just started in this and i want to say in the fall too like we did so i think her name is adriana andrea also at the Farragut community center and she's looking to partner up also from my understanding perfect would i be able to connect with you to get her contact information sure perfect yeah. i was just about to say the same thing miss Pollen. <laughs> Okay. Latrell is a great resource. And also, I think it'll be a good access, like um, when Ms. Peterson was speaking about the unions and, you know, outreaching with the community of Farragut mm -hmm. and Fort Greene. So, thank you. Also, thank oh, and I have one more question. Um, <laughs> when you spoke about the, the internships for, this, for, the, for some of you, is, was it, because I came in a little late, so it, was it for just high school students or was it for like, uh, like- It's for college and high school seniors. Okay, thank you. That's till 24? <laughs> Age of 24. If they're enrolled in college and then if they're high school seniors, they can participate. Okay. And also another suggestion is the Church of the Open Door. I know they post, um. Your, your newsletter on a church website. So maybe that could be something that you can also reach out to the church at the open door. Okay. Yes, I definitely want to connect with you to get all of these great <laughs> people in the community to connect with. Um, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, by the way, just so everyone know, uh, during this conversation, our board office, um, Taya Muller has been putting in links to the different organizations we've been mentioning. So if anyone's interested directly, mm. you can just click on those links. Okay. Now, one last question before I open it up to the public. Okay. Uh, currently right now, um, because of COVID and everything else, a lot of uh, different organizations have been closing, uh, small businesses, so forth and so on. How are you doing at the Brooklyn Navy Yard as far as uh, individuals who are still working and working there or offices or businesses that are still open? Mm -hmm. um, How's that affecting we're yeah, we're definitely not immune to the things that COVID has done to the economy. Um, outside of the employment center, we have a great business service center at the Brooklyn Navy Yard that has been supporting the tenants on the yard and employers with doing their PPE app, um, PPP applications or getting grants so that they can stay viable and open. They have a lot of initiatives initiatives that we are doing and working um, with the city to make sure that people just still have money and access to run. We have seen um, some employers not necessarily hiring right now um, because they don't know what's going to happen in the future and like for budgetary restraints, um, which is again normal and something that I think that a lot of people are dealing with during COVID. But for those employers who, and then on the other end, there's some employers who've taken to the internet and e-commerce and is just really rocking and rolling and expanding. So we're leveraging when we can those success op um, opportunities and getting people jobs in those spaces and then taking opportunities to do trainings while um, in upskilling 
different residents and candidates while we're waiting for those opportunities to come back. Okay, and currently what is your capacity? Is it like 95%, 96% as far as- For the tenants on a yard? Yes. I do not have, I do not want to give you an accurate number, <laughs> a number for that. I honestly do not have that information. Yeah, I was um, just kind of curious. Think... Yeah, I was just curious about the impact. If you can just send that to us, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Get an Absolutely. idea. Okay, uh, I have a one individual hand up who's public. Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak? Hello, I just have a quick question. So I do see on your website that you do offer the OSHA 30 certification for people who go through your training. Um, and again, please forgive me if I'm not, um, if I don't know all the knowledge, but I was under the impression that in order to be in a union, that was one, that was like a, one of the re requirements for, to become a union member. Are there other union requirements that they require for them to become union members? Yes. And each union, um, each union, it differs. So to work on particular construction sites and contingent on what those sites are doing, they may need an OSHA 30, an OSHA 40, and the tier goes on and on. So yes, outside of OSHA, um, which is a great certification to have, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other requirements and it's contingent on the union and then where you're going to work and what you'll be doing. Okay, because that seems very, I'm just saying because I just like looked at the website so when I looked at the website you know as someone who from the public looks at it I'm under the impression I take this course I take the OSHA 30 and you know um so no it is but there are other requirements they would have to take yes and before okay. anyone will take the OSHA or go through any of our training they will definitely have um, an opportunity to speak to someone in that space to understand okay. what the full flesh, absolutely. So that okay. they're not feeling as if they're taking this certification or having this experience and then not um, getting the opportunity that was presented to them. They're definitely um, having that conversation with someone so that they can be aware of what's next. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Peterson, I see your hand raised in the comment. Here's what's really important about all of that conversation with the unions and what they're going to require mm -hmm. in terms of people to be trained. This is a very big question, and I hope that there's a good answer. In order to receive, <laughs> in order to receive the training, be it OSHA 30, 40, or 50, it costs money for mm -hmm. that kind of instruction. So with that said, is the Brooklyn Navy Yard going to sponsor those who may be interested or will the Brooklyn Navy Yard create a partnership with others like Steiner Studio to subsidize that kind of training for the community? Be it 50, 100, 1,000, whatever mm -hmm. that cutoff would be, I think is something that the Navy Yard um, um, the president and yourself and, and other executive mm -hmm. team members should should truly consider. And there's a number of people within that yard space that should be willing to, to be a part of that. And so uh, you should take that back and let your CEO know that Denise Peterson brought that up. I shall. Thank okay, because because it's re very important because they they the unions can come and talk about the union is the greatest thing in the world, but if the fifty people that come to this session have no mm -hmm. way of being trained after they tell you how much training that you need in order to have the certification in order to get the job, it won't matter what they said. Um, as great as that information could be, so that is a key element to that component or any other component. And then I'm going that I'm going to just say this if I can, Mr. Flanoy. Yes. Mr. Flanoy and I talked uh, last week and um, about where where the committee could go and you know in different ways. But one of the ways, and it has always been my way, um, is that we need to look at or reassess or get a greater understanding. There is 
multiple developments going. Much of it is going in CB, much of it is going on in CB2 mm -hmm. at the same time. And so it seems to me perhaps that there's no true community outreach to help those people living in public housing get any of those jobs. I'm not sure that all of those positions are require union, but maybe even to be at the construction site, you have to have something. I don't know. So that goes back to the training and how long the training. And then by the time the training is over, the building is up. And even with that, there still needs to, we need to further the conversation because there are maintenance jobs that take place within these buildings. You don't have to have the greatest training in the world in order to sweep a floor <laughs> or to buff a floor or to clean a window mm -hmm. or to dust anywhere. So I think we really need to broaden in a very fully engaged and timing kind of way to so some of these people can be the beneficiaries of all of this construction that's going, one is going higher than the other, and that we have no black and brown people or other people um, that come directly from this immediate community, Farragut, Ingersoll, Whitman, the buildings are coming up all around them and there's nothing much coming in the way of opportunities for them. And I think that is uh, very concerning. And I think that we need to introduce or reintroduce that conversation so that people can have the opportunity. When they have those opportunities, it stops them from doing other things that we don't want them to be doing, which is negative things, okay? Because when you work, you have focus, you don't have time when you have to get up at 7 a.m. to be somewhere to do all the other frivolous, non-productive things, okay? And there's a need in those communities in particular that fall right there in community board too. So I thank you for that and I will continue that engagement. I did ask the board office if um, there's a way that we can find out where all of this development is going on, not just the ones that they've already broke ground, broken ground, but the ones that's coming online that we get by email, whoever sends it to us. Oh, this is coming up in CB2. That's on this street. That's on that avenue. Or you just wake up one day, you walk down the street and say, oh, I didn't know that that was coming up there. And then there's a high rise building 40 stories high. So we need to get the community, community's attention and everybody else needs to join in and let's see how we can really get these people some productive work. Um, and, and, and you'll see how it makes a big difference for all of us and the community at large. Thank you. That sounded like a speech. I didn't want to attend it. That's fine, Ms. Peterson. Uh, that's what this board is about, about. We want to make sure people understand what we're looking for as far as the community uh, interest. Okay. Um, if there's no more questions. Okay, uh, Ms. Pauling, before I let you go, uh, is there anything that the community board can do outside of outreach that you might want us to help you out with? I think the outreach piece is a great um, place for us to, to leverage having these conversations. And as Ms. Gilman mentioned, just being in the ecosystem of the different houses and stuff like that. So I think that that's a great place to start. And I look forward to connecting with you guys to not only um, get new names and new ways that I can reach out to the people that you think will be great to, to get this stuff rolling. Um, I think that'll be a great place to start. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Looking forward to working with you. you. And hopefully we can see yourself uh, at this meeting on a regular basis. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for having me and have a great evening. You too. Uh, you're more than, happy, more than welcome to stay here for the rest of the meeting if you so wish. Okay, perfect. Okay, next on the agenda. Okay, um, Brooklyn Community Board Unemployment and uh, Business Data Updates. Okay, so uh, I actually did some information research but I realized uh, the information I have is dated. So uh, that was on, on May. Um, 
the labor that I was looking at, the labor numbers, they're not current. Unfortunately, they're always about three months behind. So the information I have is not current. Uh, for Kings County, uh, this is for um, September 2021. They were basically saying that uh, the labor force is uh, 1,204,000 individuals. Uh, of those individuals, uh, 1,071,000 are employed. Um, total of 133,000 are unemployed. Okay, so we're looking at unemployment rate at around 11.1%. Okay, uh, I'd like to get some more updated information because this is kind of behind. Uh, I will look for that. Uh, when I find that, I'll actually give it to the actual committee itself, but it gives you an idea of where we are. And then I can actually drill down and break things down for people to know. Okay, any questions, concerns, comments? Zero. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I wonder, uh, uh, can I bring this up? I, I wanted to uh, second what Ms. Peterson was saying. It, it, it seems to hit the core of, uh, of what this committee that I, that I feel is the, is the mission, the primary mission of this committee, and that's jobs and, and, and uh, economic well-being of the community. And I think what she brought up raise a point to me that how can we be more proactive and, in, and inculcate ourselves into the Navy Yard, into the unions, try to be sort of a, an arms movement, be, be, be a, a clearinghouse, have us have discussions about how we can help the community and, and meet both the unions, the companies, the developers, and try to be that kind of catalyst for the community. I, I, I know I'm rambling, but I'd like to open it up to, the, to the, the rest of the members to discuss this. I think that to me, what she brought up seems to be what we deal with all the time. And if we don't have any uh, say, we're always on the receiving end. I granted the Brooklyn Navy Yard has been very proactive with us and we are very, we have a very good relation with them, but there are other areas we could pursue. And I just wanted to bring this up so maybe other committee members can second what Ms. Peterson is saying and we could find out some way we could be much more uh, active and not reactive, if that's clear. Mr. Scala, you read my mind, okay? Um, what I've been doing uh, with some of the committee members is I've been reaching out to committee members, such as yourself also, and asking committee members to actually um, look into uh, options of, of having individuals come to this committee to actually uh, present to us, okay? This year with Young, I asked her to reach out to, or basically take a look at uh, minority and women uh, employers in the district and actually have us a list of those individuals so we can actually start reaching out to them, okay? Uh, I've also asked uh, Ms. Peterson to look at uh, those issues as far as employment opportunities that are available in the district and actually do exactly what she said, which is basically find out beforehand where the jobs are so that we can actually do outreach to them and actually see what we can do from there. Um, Mr. Scala, you already know what I asked you to do as far as store closures and opening, so that's fine. And um, Ms. Gilman and I are gonna be working with the uh, two things. Uh, Ms. Gilman actually gave me some questions for presenters as far as the different uh, business improvement districts and also with uh, any presenters that come to us. So we're, we're gonna basically be a little more proactive Okay, I'm gonna be asking individual committee members to reach out, uh, not necessarily reach out, to actually get a list of contacts that they want us to reach out to so we can have presentations here. So that's something that I'm asking uh, committee members to do. And I realized I didn't ask all the committee members, but I am sure committee members who are on, on this committee actually have uh, different uh, ideas that they have that they haven't presented to me yet. So. Uh, Oleg, if you have something that you would like to uh, bring up to the committee, I'd appreciate that. Um, Ms. Morales, also yourself, Ms. Statton, you, you too, and Luttrell, by all means, let us know what those things are, and we will by all means take a look into it and see so we can actually do this present, have those individuals do pre presentation to us or actually do outreach to them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Young. Um, just on that note, a uh, thought that I had as um, you know, both Mr. Scala and Ms. Peterson brought up the, um, the, the construction projects. Can we have 
local unions, you know, either construction or building maintenance, like come present to us on how they recruit membership and how people, you know, might be able to sort of, again, be proactive uh, and, and get on the right path to join. Them. Um, do you have an idea how we do that? Uh, may, yeah, I mean, I think we, uh, we can talk offline, but I think, um, you know, we can, we've had unions come to us before for, um, you know, for the purposes of, sorry for the background noise, um, for the purposes of drafting letters of support for different things. And so maybe the board office might be able to reach out or, um, but I, we could also look and like I know 32BJ, for instance, is a huge union for like building management, like and that's where our doormen are, you know, unionized. And so I think there's, we have enough sort of resources to hopefully identify ones that would be appropriate. Yeah, this is going to be a gradual rollout, uh, simply because right now the board office is a little short staffed. Okay, but that doesn't mean we don't actually start taking actions so that when we are fully staffed, we can actually start doing this. Yeah, even if it's like next year, you know, or September. Well, hopefully it's not going to be that long. Let's, <laughs> let's hope for March, okay? <laughs> let's be optimistic. For Teo's sake. For Teo's sake. Yes, for Teo's sake. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Ms. Morales, I see your hand raised. Hi, yes. Um, I, I appreciate the fact that she brought up the unions and possibly meeting, and this is just an idea. I don't know if it would be out of line. Right, it, or if it's not our place as a community board members, as community board members, but so with in, in our district, there's this like overdevelopment, right? And there are many buildings that are unionized as far as maintenance and doormen. And it is of my experience outside of the office as I do organizing, I've heard from numerous buildings, their maintenance and front desk, the uh, doormen, mm -hmm. complain about paying union dues and not getting the representation, never meeting their union rep. And there have been some, I've heard more negative-ish um, feedback than positive on how they're feeling like they're not properly represented. Would that be an opportunity? Is that, not, would we be out of line for asking these questions? Because they're also scared, right? Because a lot of them feel at this point that the unions themselves kind of are in bed with the employers, right? The developers. And so it's just, it's come up for me for a while now because I'm hearing this from different staff of throughout different de developments. There's gotta be some truth to it. And just wondering if we could, if any, play a role in having these conversations. Um, and if so, maybe that could be of another reason why meeting with unions can be a priority on the list. I mean, I don't know, I'm just bringing it up to you and would love to know um, everyone's thoughts on that. What I'll say to you is this, Ms. Morales, um, could you do me a favor? Send me that in writing that what you just mentioned, okay? Send it to me in email. And what I'll do is I'll run it by the, uh, the board manager. Uh, because Mr. Singletary will have to be the one that actually lets me know whether or not this is something we can move forward on. Right. Okay, great. I just figured I'd mention it, but that'll be good. Thank you. I will. Okay, not a problem. Ms. Gilman. Just thinking out loud with you, Maisha, I feel like depending with what Bill in the office and Chair Singletary say, I imagine that assuming that having unions come through is good with everybody and kind of being a good gatekeeper for the neighborhood is the idea here that we're trying to serve. I imagine that us being able to engage the unions with a live relationship could only be good for the community and saying kind of like, hey, listen, so that the membership knows, you know, who are they supposed to contact when something goes wrong? Like how accountable is this union to that work? What projects do you have next year that we can know about? How can we get more people into your union? You know, however, however we want to go about it. So I feel like regardless, it's it's such a good door to open. And it also makes me think about um what Ms. Peterson and Mr. Scala were talking about with getting out to, let's say, for example, public housing and saying like, 
we, can we have the head of those tenants associations at our meetings? Can we have a dedicated meeting to something like that where we can say, you know, what's at the top of the list for the people who live in Farragut and what's at the, like, where are you having trouble so that we're actually understanding, you know, whether it's Brooklyn Navy Yard or whether it's unions or whoever it is, kind of how are, how are our community members experiencing those groups and partnerships um, so that we're, we're hearing from everybody. So I feel like it's a good note for us to take, like if there's, a, if there's groups and we're thinking one of them might be developers, one might be unions, one might be kind of community public housing members and we can just say, we're gonna make sure we know you know, the couple of people at each of those that are gonna be invited to every single EDC meeting that we have and definitely to the ones that, that make the most sense for them to be at. But I think it's, I, I was on a transportation committee meeting a week or two back and they were talking about how hard it is now that we don't have a, a department of transportation person assigned to the committee. And there's something so powerful about having a single person who has to be in relationship with us who represents a group. Um, and I think that's part of what we're missing here is like, there's these big projects and these big groups of people who we're just thinking about as, you know, 10,000 people or 20,000 people. But I think if we can get, like Kate's saying, some of the contact info for, that, that I'm sure we have listed for all these unions and these, these tenants associations that we can at least start to say, okay, like we know someone is holding the ball here with us and they can give us, you know, the best info of how to go forward. So thumb up to all those things. Thank you. Uh, Eileen, I want to apologize. I missed your question in the chat. Um, by all means, if you reach out directly to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, I'm sure they can answer those questions for you. My apologies again. I, I missed your question in the chat. That's okay, thank you. The reason why I was asking really quickly was because I went to a city, make a long story short, a city resource fair recently, and I was given a flyer and the flyer said that the New York City Department of Education was offering OSHA 30th at the Brooklyn STEM Center. That's the only reason why I was asking. Okay, well, thank you. Um, Brooklyn STEM Center, uh, when was that flyer, when were you at Okay, hold, hold on, let me, let me go to my, hold, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. If you can do me a favor, if you can just enter that into the chat, I appreciate that. Kathleen? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Then. Okay, uh, so that was a, I, I like that conversation we just had in the committee. I really appreciate that, guys. Okay, it's awesome. Okay, so chairperson's report. Well, you already heard part of it and you all jumped right in on that and I appreciate that. Uh, I'm looking forward to all those individuals who I haven't uh, done outreach to, by all means, please let me know what you're interested in so we can actually make this part of the agenda. Okay. Uh, now, as far as uh, other things that are occurring within the district, uh, currently right now, uh, it's my understanding, and I heard this today, I'm not sure if it's actual factually or not, actually it's gonna occur, but there's some redistricting going on right now uh, and it's affecting uh, our, it may affect our district. Uh, Park Slope and other Brooklyn districts are basically looking to be rolled into the Staten Island's 11th district, uh, which is the Republican representative, Nicole uh, Malatates, I believe her name is, I forgot. Okay, and that's actually something that's going, they're looking to do. Uh, that's currently uh, Nadia Velasquez uh, district, seven district. So uh, it will actually, the new district will extend down to Court Street. So, which is very interesting because we don't have a relationship with this individual, okay? So as far as a direct relationship. So um, I will see if this is actually something that's going to happen, okay? Because then we'll have to start a relationship with her and discover if this is something that we can work together with. Mr. Scal, I see your hand raised. Bill, I, 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 I'm not predicting it, but it's very possible that she will be, um, she won't win the next election. And we'll probably be working with uh, Mr. Rose. So um, who has been, they've been going back and forth in that district. I think the state uh, assembly or the redistricting is, is favoring the Democrats and they did that purposely so that we will, <laughs> Ms. Melitakis may not be there anymore. Uh, however, on another subject, State Senator Kavanaugh may not be 
our representative also. He, his district may be changed or something. We may have another state senator. So things are changing, you're absolutely correct. But uh, look, we have a voice and we're not gonna keep quiet no matter who the representative is, right? So that's where we talk about it. That is correct. I just wanna make the uh, committee aware of this, that this is something that's maybe happening in the future. Okay. Uh, Ms. Avedon, okay, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I have a quick question. Where can we find out, um, based on our address, uh, where we are with the new redoing of the map? Is there a website? Uh, well, they're actually doing this almost, okay, they're in the midst of doing it right now. Uh, we're just okay. being told, okay, what's occurring, okay? And they're going to be voting on it probably on Friday. <laughs> so, so. When they read district, what is it only for our state legislative, or is that also going to affect our? Obviously, it won't affect our borough president, but will it affect like my councilman? Um, I think it may. I'm not sure. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna be able to answer that. Um, okay. Decisively, but I believe it may also depends on what they're doing as far as redistricting. Oh, that's sad. I kind of like my compliment, but okay. I think we all like I our just wanna, Right. Can, can, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Bill. I just sent you a text that I have to go on to another meeting, but I think that's for another committee conversation. <laughs> oh, I, was just, I was just bringing it up because one of the things about this <laughs> is that these are individuals that will actually finance, okay, uh, different uh, not-for-profits, okay? And that's the thing I'm concerned about. Okay, fact, but I'm talking about the politics of it, and you know we all. Well, I'm not talking about the politics at all. Politics is nothing that we have to do with. Okay, Ms. Peterson, have a good day. Okay, and with that, okay, uh, the other issue, and I brought this up with. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I had another. Um, so, will the community board still be number two that I'm part of? Or? Oh yeah, that's not going to change. That's not going to change. Okay, that that was that was like that was what I was leading to because I was. Not sure. No, that's not going to change. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I was talking to the board office, and one of the things we were trying to do was trying to discover the new regulations and laws as far as the marijuana dis distributors and along those lines. And uh, we haven't been able to get anyone to come into the uh, to give us committee a report, uh, but I do know Senator Schumer gave an update on the federal marijuana le uh, legalization and banking issues. Okay, he gave that yesterday. I want to drill down on that because as you all know, mm -hmm. uh, the states may actually say that um, selling marijuana is not a, an offense, but the federal government still considers it an offense. And because of that, uh, the individuals who do uh, sell marijuana cannot use federal banks to uh, actually place their money in. Okay, so I'd like to find out what that is because that's a big uh, component, okay, going forward with these new stores and distributors, okay? Um, also on uh, today, the City Council Discretionary Funding Workshops, they actually held one today. Uh, there's gonna be another workshop on Thursday the 10th, okay? Now these workshops are for uh, the council members, as I was mentioning already, they allocate funding directly to not-for-profits. Okay, so if you are not for profit and you need to know how to write these, uh, submit these proposals to them, this workshop will tell you how to do that. The next workshop, as I said before, will be on the 10th. Okay, and then finally, uh, I have a meeting with the CLS board. Okay, uh, that'll be the regular meeting and that'll be on February 17th. So once I have that meeting, I'll let the committee uh, know exactly what occurred at that meeting. That's Downtown Brooklyn Partnership. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll now, now go to the next item on the agenda. Any questions or concerns or any, any comments? Okay. Um, other committee business. Is there any other committee business that we'd like to bring up at this time? Other than what we already discussed? Ms. Gilman, I, I saw you. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I am curious as I think through kind of the bid uh, question and the set of questions that we're basically going to send to all these different bids that overlap our, our district in mm -hmm. advance of them coming. So if you guys remember, we had this meeting last year 
and we're able to kind of get a real big cohesive understanding from all these separate um, groups, kind of what's going on, what their biggest concerns are, and it fed a lot of our understanding of the statement of needs uh, mm -hmm. as it related to those businesses. So I'm just thinking, I'm drafting up some questions that we should send them. If there's any that are kind of jumping out to you guys, I just want to put it in your mind. You can always reach out to me directly or send it, you know, to, to the board office to me that way. Um, but essentially how I'm thinking about it is asking them to be ready to cover kind of obviously the pandemic and, and how that experience has landed them now, what their actual data has been like within their bid uh, for closures and things that we're really having a hard time finding ourselves outside of um, a couple kind of new resources we've, we've all found in the last month or two with how to get unemployment numbers, um, what their biggest concerns are, things that are hardest for them to um, kind of deal with and have their small businesses deal with, similar to some of the concerns we heard about street food vendors or things like that last year that probably came as a surprise, or at least they did to meet it to hear some of those issues. Um, to think about ways that we can partner together and be more um, kind of collaborative in an ongoing way. So anything that, that kind of comes to mind for you all when you think about the bids and what we want them to answer, you know, and be ready to answer in advance before they come. I just want to put that in your minds. Ms. Gilman? Yep. Um, when, is there a date that we're looking forward to sending this uh, questionnaire out? And like a, a beginning, a middle, you know, an end, some sort of a, a timeline for this so we are prepared. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, Mr. Scala, uh, in the chat right now, the board office has said that to give the bid sufficient time, we need to have these in by February 18th. Okay. So that'll be the next two weeks. So I, I'm going to put my email. Bill, is that okay if I put my email up in the chat and just have people send me stuff that way as I as I make it, or would you rather this go through the board office or through you? Um, since it's going to be going to you and you're going to put it together, um, you're going to run it past myself and Ms. Peterson, and we'll have, and I'll have a discussion with the board office. Okay, so, so I'll put my, my email in the chat for you guys. Um, and basically over the next two weeks, the reason we're doing this this way instead of last year is we want them all to have it in advance and for us to not be wasting any time during the meeting fielding questions that they're saying they don't have answers to. Um, or they don't have the data or they don't um, kind of haven't done the, the look that we need them to. So we're gonna give them a few weeks ahead of our meeting and that's the reason for this. And then as far as what I already have on the list, let me just read it through for you guys so you understand. Basically current stats, uh, turnover over the last year within their bid, the general take on their kind of COVID experience and recovery, most urgent problems that they're seeing for the businesses within their bids, any impact from you know, open streets programs or other legislative changes since we last talked to them, their anticipated hiring and how they're ad advertising it in the community, uh, anticipated growth areas that community members should you know, know to get trained in or, or things that they're kind of forecasting out, uh, any other local changes that they feel they're gonna be impacted by. So say you know, the Atlantic rail yard construction, jail construction, rezoning, redistricting, things like that. I think hearing kind of where the bids are is gonna be helpful. Generally how we can have better kind of year round partnership. Um, I think some of these bids have changed leadership as well. And also keeping them as good points of contact for our kind of job fair Brooklyn Navy Yard Spring project. So that's what I have so far. Um, and I'm gonna put my email in the chat now. So just over the next week or two, send me any of your guys' thoughts and I will add it to okay, the list. Could I just, could I just add, could I just add yeah. uh, something about rents? How their yep. rent, what, did their rent go up? Is it, what, has it, the leases changed? The, the time of the leases, has that, that may be a question to ask them also. Uh, how uh, that Mr. Scal, may, may I make Thank a suggestion? Uh, could you yeah. send that email to Catherine? You're breaking up, Bill. Could you send that information to Catherine by her email? Okay. That, rec that recommendation. That way, you know, she'll have a written Thank record you. of what you're asking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Gilman, uh, if you want to send out what those that list to the committee, okay. Yeah, I'll uh, the chat now so they can see it. Exactly. 
Um, Mustatin and, okay, and Latrell. I don't have your emails. Uh, if you want to send your email to me, I'd appreciate that. I have your, um, your uh, what's called, your telephone numbers, but I don't have your emails. Okay, so I'll, um, the number that you gave, the 718 number, is that a cell phone or a? Um... That's my cell phone. You can send that information to my cell phone. Okay, I'll text it to you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you emailed me recently. I did, Latrell. Yeah. I think I responded back to your email. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Latrell. Thanks for reminding me. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, any other items for... Uh, any other business or comments or just, yes, Ms. Morales. I'm sorry, I was waving by, I put in the chat <laughs> that I have to jump off to another meeting, but I will be following up with you with that email. And good thank night, everyone. Okay, thank you, Morales. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Fonoy. Yes. Uh, can, can you please, when I send you, your, um, send you the email address, could you email me so I'll have yours? By all means. Thank you much. Okay, not a problem, Staten. Okay, uh, community forum. State. Okay, this... State, not Oh, state, Staten. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I am, uh, I went, I had, I uh, went to phonetic spelling. Okay, back in the day, they had a 46 letter alphabet and that's how they taught us to read and write by phonetics. If you, notice, if, you, if you notice, there's not two T's in my name, so that's why it's not Staten. It's <laughs> I, I, I understand. It's Staten. <laughs> I understand. I'm just letting know why I do some of the things that I do. <laughs> that's perfectly okay. I'm here to correct you all the time. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> okay. Uh, community forum. Uh, any public, uh, any, anyone from the public would like to make a comment? You have three minutes. Just unmute yourself if you wish to speak. Okay, hearing or seeing no one raise their hands. Uh, I am now up to item 10 in the agenda. Uh, motion to adjourn. So oh. much. Okay, I, I thought maybe you guys would hang out a little longer. <laughs> Mr. Cohen, okay, second it. Okay, Ms. Ms. Yearwood Young. Okay, beautiful. Guys, uh, this has been a great meeting. Um, looking forward to hearing everyone's um, outreach as far as what they're looking to do. I'm sorry, I'm a little foggy right now. Feel <laughs> okay. better, Bill. I think you better take some tea and get to bed. <laughs> I am thinking about that. You have no idea. <laughs> you, thank you for